So Trump got indicted for 37 counts from the Justice Department. All I'm hearing are Democrats and people who dislike Trump doing victory laps. The evidence is damning. They got him on tape. There's pictures in the indictment. But if you're old enough to remember the quote slam dunk evidence against O.J. Simpson, you know there's no case that is a sure thing. Let's talk about the three major hurdles that the Department of Justice still has before they get a conviction and what his defenders, if not his legal team, may be doing to help that along. For any major, number one, for any major case of this magnitude, Donald Trump has the right to a jury trial for these federal charges. A jury is 12 people, ideally peers, picked from the jurisdiction where the trial is being held, sitting in judgment of you. To be convicted in this case, Donald Trump would need 12 people from this part of Florida to agree that he's guilty. One holdout, one not guilty or abstention, would not be a conviction. That's not a conviction. Now, the charges in Florida where Trump got close to 6 million votes in the last election. Now, having previously voted for or against Trump will not be disqualifying matter for a juror. Uh, just because you voted for him doesn't mean you can't sit on the jury. What would be a disqualifying matter is if you told the judge you already have an opinion to his character. If you know him as a slime ball or a liar, as someone you cannot trust, or on the other side as someone who you would explicitly trust, though honestly, I don't know anybody would say that. This would disqualify a juror. I'm going to go more into depth this a little bit later, but one lone MAGA juror gets him 37 counts of a hung jury. And I don't think being a Republican or being MAGA even, or going to a rally or voting would be enough to stop you from being a juror or stop any person from being a juror. Only if you've already come to a conclusion and therefore cannot be fair about the case. And then only if the judge knows. So you kind of have to admit and let the court know based on your answers to the question the court asks. And yes, the judge does come into play. Uh, look, the judge in a criminal case is number two. A judge in a criminal case is very important. People who tell you the judge doesn't decide, the jury is the one who makes decisions, they don't understand this system and they probably don't understand sports at all. For example, the judge has final say on if a voter is too biased. The judge is the one who decides the line. If, for example, owning a MAGA hat gets you off the jury, or watching The Apprentice every week gets you off the jury, because you've already come to a conclusion. And that's something that probably can't be reviewed on appeal, at least not easily. The judge is the final decider of what evidence the jury hears. If the judge thinks there's a reason to exclude evidence, and the judge is able to do that, then the judge is able to do that. So the jury never hears that evidence leaving a hole in the jury's mind as to any particular fact. The judge could tell an attorney that certain topics are off limits, that they've taken too much time with a particular witness or a particular line of questioning, that a particular question is asked and answered or an answer is cumulative and therefore the jury doesn't get to hear it. Imagine saying the umpire in baseball doesn't decide who wins. Yes, it's true. The final points aren't decided by the umpire, but calling balls and strikes differently for different teams throughout the entire case. That changes the final score and affects the winner 100%. And this is all before we talk about this particular judge, Judge Eileen Cannon, which may or may not be the permanent judge in the case, depending on who you listen to in the reporting. But there's reason to think because Trump appointed her, she's automatically biased. No, that's not a reason that because she sat on a previous case involving Trump, that she's automatically biased. That's not a reason to say automatically she cannot sit on this case. In fact, many jurisdictions think it's a positive if the same judge sits on subsequent cases of the same defendant. So that's not a reason to recuse her or not let her sit on this particular case. The third thing you have to remember is that the evidence and I don't mean all the evidence against Donald Trump. By all accounts, there's mountains of it. Mountains. Uh, photographs of the indictment, audio of him talking about things. But uh, let's agree, for the purpose of this conversation, that the evidence is huge. It's damning. It's monster. This is not the evidence you want to face. Uh, but let's talk about that. All evidence in a jury trial, if it wants to come before a jury, has to come in through some type of witness. The witness has to have first-hand knowledge of something, seen it or heard it, and then testify to it. They have to testify to the foundation of it. Where does it come from? When did they see it before? But if you are so inclined to disbelieve the evidence, all you have to do is believe the witness is a liar. 
you have to believe the witness has just decided to not tell you the truth. And then the case remains unproven. By now, we've all heard of the quote, deep state. The government behind the government, the bureaucracy who really makes the sausages behind the scenes, without needing to tell the president or the elected officials, the swamp, which needed to be trained. you remember that one? In his speech on June 10th, 2023, uh, Trump has already suggested that at least some of this evidence was planted. And while he hasn't got into it yet, has anyone heard anything about AI in the last two months? If they can get Biggie to sing a Tupac song, how do you really lay foundations that someone's voice isn't an AI recreation? The hardest part of that, any jury prepared to hear that the evidence was created by AI, is that if the government puts on an expert witness to say it wasn't manipulated, is prepared to believe that that expert is lying too. It's a descending spiral that eats itself. So, you have evidence which may not be believed, that can be kept out by a judge, which is a history of making decisions for Trump's benefit, before a jury from a jurisdiction where people generally like him and may be predisposed to think the Justice Department is out to get him. That is not a slam dunk case. As his defense team, legal and extra legal, what do you do? Bob Shapiro is very famous for saying during the original OJ trial meetings that he would get movie channels to replay more 12 Angry Men. You guys remember 12 Angry Men, of course, is the famous case where one outstanding person turned a jury from guilty to not guilty. And he wanted to use that movie to inspire that in potential jurors in the OJ case. I do think what you're going to see is Trump's legal team and his extra legal team doing everything they can to inspire potential jurors as opposed to the actual jurors inspire potential jurors before the trial starts and get them to think and look about things a certain way. For example, I think you're going to see to start many more news specials from Fox News and whoever else, specials on jury nullification. Jury, nullifica jury nullification is the theory that the jury can believe someone is guilty legally, but can still find a person not guilty in court. Many people have written that the founding fathers believed uh, that it was an important part of the jury system. Basically, if 12 people thought what you did was acceptable, it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be against the law. That 12 people could override the law that the legislature passed. Nowadays, we have jury instructions against nullification. Attorneys are not allowed to argue it, but you have other organizations that push it. For example, drug legalization for the longest time encouraged people who sat on jury trials for marijuana charges to stay silent before the judge during jury selection as to their bias in favor of marijuana. And then no matter the charge, vote to acquit. They would go so far as to pass out flyers in front of the courthouses. I strongly believe that the tactic Trump supporters will follow here, once they get into it, Fox News and other outlets will run specials on how jury nullification works and how to engage in it, and that if they can infiltrate the jury, there's no way to know in advance that that's what the jury is going to decide. And wait until the Republican media globs on to the, the point of, oh, now you trust the police? Wait till they get that talking point. We've been singing Still Not Loving Police since 1999 and more vulgar versions before that. But now we believe everything they say that just because they're federal agents, they're somehow different than state police. Finally, let's keep in mind that there's 37 counts. Juries get tired with three counts. 37 is a long case. The longer the presentation of evidence, the more people miss. The more presented, the more Trump will run with the, if it's that perfect, it must be planted. And that's before they throw out, it could all be AI. Anyway, before you do the victory lap, before you say the feds win every case, before you say everyone accused is guilty, just keep in mind, built into our system is the belief that it's better that 10 guilty people go free than one innocent person gets incarcerated. And we hear every day innocent people have been incarcerated. What if Trump is the one that goes free? Don't celebrate before you're out of the locker room. Just wanted to talk about that and let you guys know those particular points. Thank you very much always for tuning in.